Hey everyone, I'm Dan Sege from Hydro Ottawa, and I'll be hosting the Think Energy podcast. So here's today's big question. Are you looking to better understand the fast-changing world of energy? Join me every two weeks and get a unique perspective from industry leaders as we deep dive and discuss some of the coolest trends, emerging technologies, and latest innovations that drive the energy sector. So stay tuned as we explore some traditional and some quirky facets of this industry. This is the Think Energy Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to a very special episode of the Think Energy Podcast. Today, I'd like to do my part with this podcast by breaking the silence around mental illness and support mental health all across Canada on Bell Let's Talk Day. According to the Mental Health Commission, on any given week, more than 50,000 Canadians are unable to go to work due to mental health problems. The stigma surrounding mental health is real, and online campaigns like Bell Let's Talk are helping to bring mental health into the light by sparking a conversation. Here are a few facts. Fact number one, 20% of all Canadians will likely develop a mental illness in their lifetime. It might be you. It might be your spouse, sibling, parent, child, friend, or colleague. Fact number two. In Canada, 90% of people who are depressed never seek treatment, despite the fact that a whopping 80% of those who do respond well to it. Bell Let's Talk Day inspires active online engagement, but social change requires more than a social media plan. It requires a long-term, sustainable strategy. Let's open up the conversation with Canada's leading organization responsible for creating lasting change in communities across the country, the United Way. Joining me today is the Vice President of Community Impact at the United Way East Ontario, Denise Taylor Gilhan. Welcome, Denise. How's your day so far? Oh, Dan, thank you so much for having me in today. Uh, my day's just excellent. Good, perfect. Denise, what are some of the examples uh, of mental health conditions that people struggle with? Yeah, well, the most common mental health conditions uh, in Ontario are depression bipolar disorder, alcohol use disorder, so addictions, social phobia, and schizophrenia. Okay. Um, I've read that in any given year, one in five people in Canada will experience a mental health issue, but stigma is a big hurdle for those getting the help they need. Has awareness and initiatives like Bell Let's Talk move the needle? You know, I think that, um, you know, the issue of stigma is a really serious issue when it comes to delivering programs to support people with mental health issues. You know, if you, when we have stigma, people are much less likely to seek out services. In fact, in Canada, 90% of people don't seek out services when they, when they are experiencing a mental health issue, 90%. And yet 80% of people with mental health issues who do seek help find that those services are very helpful. So stigma is one of the factors that interferes with people's willingness to reach out and uh, talk to people about their condition. When you say that's one of the factors, what would be another factor? I think the other issue is access okay. and people's uh, awareness. Most of us are not specialists in the issue of health provision mm-hmm. and, men- and, and the mental health services system. And so navigating the system can be quite difficult. So when you combine stigma with uh, the uh, complexity of the health system, it can be really challenging for individuals and their family members to s- help s- um, uh, access the right services. Okay. Um, What is the first thing someone should do if they are struggling with their mental health? Like what treatment options are available? 
So in light of uh, Bell Let's Talk Day, Mm -hmm. I would say that the first thing people need to do is to talk to someone, whether it is their family member or a very good friend, a teacher, um, someone who uh, they work with, uh, who they can trust. Having that first conversation is often very beneficial. And the second thing is to connect to services. So 211, for example, is an, uh, a number that people can call to find out about community services in their own community uh, that is suited, w- suited for them. Uh, the other thing is very often people are in distress if they're in crisis, then they really do need to reach out to numbers like the Distress Center or 911 if it's an emergency. So the crisis line at Distress Center, do you mind if I give out the number? Because it's always Go for important. It. Go we, for it. It's a number we should all have at our fingertips. So Distress Center crisis line, 613-722-6914. Uh, for anyone in our area who needs help, uh, the distress line is there 24 hours, seven days days a week. 211, though, is the other number that I would encourage people to to use. That number helps people identify services, services for themselves or perhaps a family member. 211 is nationwide and the other one is just Eastern Ontario? Um, The distress line is for East Ontario and Gatineau area as well. Uh, Tala number is uh, for for French um, for both sides of the river as well. Okay, thank you. Um, On the United Way East Ontario website, there's a line. Asking for help isn't easy, but getting help should be. How accessible is professional and affordable care in Canada? Well, that is uh, truly the issue. So there is no doubt that our health system is uh, feeling the the pressure of uh, the need to provide services. So, of course, uh, services that are uh, are funded through the healthcare system are free, uh, but often it takes some time to get um, the health services that you need. But our but you know the Royal Ottawa Hospital, among others, CHEO provide a great deal of care for for folks in our area. Um, and so at no cost, of course. But the, I think the other thing, and certainly where United Way is, we know that within the healthcare system and around the issue of mental health, one of the most underfunded areas is um, community-based counseling. And that's why we put a lot of our investments in both peer support and uh, community-based counseling services. So those services are offered uh, through community-based organizations. They often specialize in supporting newcomers, uh, youth, children, parents, um, uh, LGBTQ plus community uh, families. And, and those services are at no cost or very low cost. Um, and that's where we are putting our investments. Where does the United Way fit into the conversation at the local level? Uh, does the United Way help folks navigate their way through the system? So so United Way also looks at holistic systems. We believe in integrated and comprehensive programming. And that's why we invest in programs like the Distress Center and, and uh, the 1-800 number, the, 1-800 numbers, the, the crisis lines, to make sure that they're readily accessible to all. Um, programs to support parents whose young people, their, their children, are affected by mental health. So PLEO is another good example of a distress line. The thing that I would say that is most important in terms of our work is that we look at mental health as a, an umbrella issue. It, it, you know, we look at community wellness and well-being So when you think of communities that are under a great deal of pressure because of poverty, because of the the sense of safety in the neighborhood, because of things that are happening, the the increased number of people with mental health issues, uh, the the influx of of, uh, new residents who have been traumatized perhaps because they have 
uh, been refugees and have lived in a refugee camp and all of the trauma that goes with that. Um, those neighborhoods are under a great deal of pressure. And so our investments in those communities are to bring community together to ensure that there's place-based services. That means services that are readily accessible to people that don't have a lot of money to travel across the city um, to, um, to purchase services and to work with the community to make the community feel safer. And that does a lot to help support people recover their mental health. The other thing that I, that we do is we invest in employment programs and financial literacy programs and supports to help people navigate financial issues. Mm-hmm. We think about what it's like this time of the year when, when the bills are coming in from the holidays and, and just the amount of stress people are under because of finances, the, the high cost of housing, for example. It's really important that if, if our community can help provide that information that will help people manage those financial cr- big or small crises, uh, that does a lot to reduce stress in the family. And the other thing I would link that to is that in Ottawa, we have a lot of youth, children, and infants even, with high levels of uh, mental health distress. And and we know that family is often the place where, um, where we can prevent uh, those increased levels of anxiety with children and with youth that can lead then to things like substance use disorder. So we also invest in programs to support families, to help them learn how to parent infants, even when they may have come from families that were very disconnected and perhaps not able to parent. Mm -hmm. That is a preventative program that goes a long way to improving mental health overall. Okay, good, thank you. Are you able to expand on the local organizations and services the United Way supports? I'm sure that you you alluded to the 24-7 crisis lines. There's peer support groups, uh, community suicide prevention network. Can you expand on this a bit? Yes. So, you know, with the support of our door owners, we, uh, and as as you know, we invest in the crisis lines uh, like the Distress Centre, uh, PLEO, so Parent Lifelines of Eastern Ontario, and Talad uh, th- And that covers our whole region and ensures that we have li- uh, services that are readily s- there for people 24-7, and that's a really important resource. But we also invest in peer support programs. Those are really helpful for people that are on a longer term journey with mental health, having others that have gone on that journey with them and and themselves are are recovering and and able to give back. We we actually have a a video that uh, we've just posted about one of uh, those individuals, Basil, who's a PhD student who was uh, uh, suffering from PSTD, um, post-traumatic stress disorder and who is doing well now but did need support uh, around mental health and found Psychiatric Survivors of Ottawa, um, an organization that we found really beneficial. It provided him with a community and now he's giving back by providing support to others in his community. As I mentioned before, uh, community-based counseling services are really, really important, uh, especially if they can be place-based. And so we have, for many years, funded programs like Jewish Family Services, Family Services of Ottawa, uh, Counseling Family Services, OCISO, Ottawa, um, so organizations that provide supports to refugees, to newcomers, to uh, to those um, LGBTQ families and individuals um, to women that have experienced violence, among others, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, families as well. Uh, so those are programs that we fund. Um, we we work with Wabano, uh, okay. Uville, um, Operation Come Home, and provide support so that they can deliver uh, very um, important substance use counseling for youth. It's a really important part of the work we do, uh, along with supporting the school boards to provide uh, assistance for youth who are uh, experiencing substance use disorder. That's 
a collaborative project. We work with the SENS Foundation. We work with Ottawa Public Health, uh, the Lynn, uh, among others, this, all four school boards, and the Ottawa Network for Education, because we know that if we can work with youth early so that they don't move into adulthood with, with untreated mental health and substance use disorder, then they're going to be able to succeed and move ahead. So those programs um, are our work. We work collaboratively uh, with many organizations to support kids uh, across the whole, whole area. Okay. Uh, what are some of the outcomes you've seen as a result of United Way's work in the community? Right. So just looking at the programs that we're involved with and that we fund. So uh, so last year, 47,000 individuals uh, benefited from the programs that we're involved in, whether they were for youth or seniors, whether they were for families or adults, uh, the peer support and the counseling programs. And what's good about that is that 78% of those individuals felt better supported and in fact had a reduction their st- in their stress levels. So, so that's a pretty significant impact. The other thing that um, we know is that uh, that 84% of clients experience a significant reduction in stress and anxiety. So, um, you know, we know the programs work. We know that the that being heard and and feeling that there's someone who can help is one of the most important things that people can have when they are in a, a position where they're feeling in crisis. Okay. Well, Denise, we've reached the end of this special episode of the uh, Think Energy podcast. How can our listeners learn more about the United Way East Ontario and how can they connect with you? Well, uh, what I would in- encourage people to do is to go on our website, mm-hmm. at United Way EO, United Way EO dot CA. And, uh, and they can go to the section called Local Issues, and we have a local issue related to mental health. There's a lot more information there about the issue, about what United Way is doing to support the community on that issue, and how they can help. And the other thing that I would remind people, again, it's a repeat, but I think it's so important, if you or a family member is struggling with mental health, if you need access to services and supports, to go to ni- 211. So 211 to help navigate the system and learn about supports that can help you both here in Ottawa, but across Canada. So if you are if you have a family member living in Vancouver, for example, mm-hmm. they can help you find supports. That's a really important service. And the other number is the distress line, 613-722-6914. Mental health stigma is real. So join Bell Let's Talk. Help by sparking the conversation. That's it, folks. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode of the Think Energy podcast. For past episodes, make sure you visit our website, hydroottawa.com backslash podcast. Lastly, if you found value in this podcast, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, this podcast is a wrap. Cheers, everyone.